Hello guys and welcome. This is my 1998 Mitsubishi Gold CJO, which means it is the fifth generation of this car. This model was introduced in 1995 and the production was held until 2003. In the Europe you could choose from two engine versions, 1.3 and 1.6. Also there was the third hardcore version in, available only in Japan with 1.6 Mivec engine which produced 160 horsepower. This car is the 1.3 version and it only produces 75 horsepower but given that this car weighs only about 1000 kilograms it's pretty zippy and not all that slow as I'll show you later. Thanks to the low displacement volume and low weight this car is pretty good on gas it can easily get, get up to 40 mpg or about 6 liters 200 kilometers. My car is the top trip version which came with all of the optional accessories. Which means it has front fog lights, power windows, power mirrors, air conditioning, wooden trim in the interior and little bit nicer seats and carpeting. It can do 0 to 60 in about 11 seconds. This car is not about top speed or acceleration, it's about sharp cornering and zippy little turns which it does excellently and it almost feels like a go-kart. Especially when I put on summer tires which have a smaller and firmer sidewall so it doesn't wang jangle from the side to side. Also, thanks to the aftermarket tape on the exhaust, the car sounds quite good. Take a listen. This car came standard with 13 inch rims with 175 to 70 tires which are not the best for cornering experience but they are really quiet and comfortable especially in winter when there is sand and little rocks on the road everywhere. As a part of standard equipment this car also has these handy mud guards which if you look from my angle, work really well. You can see huge amounts of mud being basically glued to them. On the other hand, they reduce evaporation from surface of the fender, so they are also spot where this car can rust and rusts. Despite pretty mediocre size. This car is fairly practical. You can store a few things in this pocket, quite a lot of things in this door pocket. You can also admire this nice carpeting, which is quite nice to the touch, but catches dust really well. When I bought this car, it was so messy, I wouldn't touch it even with a shovel. It was disgusting. But I cleaned it with carpet cleaner and all the dust and dirt went away nicely. You can see this car came with power windows and the ability to lock your passenger from being able to open his own window. Which is nice for trolling. 
I don't actually understand why this button is here. I mean, who would put his kit, which is so small that it doesn't understand how to operate the window properly, on the front seat? You know, you put it in the back and there are no windows which can be opened. So, why Mitsubishi? This car is fairly basic, so it has not many fancy features. But one of them, really convenient for me, because the rear trunk lock doesn't work, is the ability to open your trunk from here. You can also pull this latch and open your fuel, which will open your fuel door. As I said before, this car was top trim, so it came with fog lamps, power mirrors, and adjustable dash light. I'm just kidding, but it has really convenient pocket for sunglasses, which is full of screws and exhaust mounts. This has been here forever and I have always been lazy to remove that. You can take a look around the interior which has nice fake wood trim. It's actually really nice to the touch and it feels almost like real wood. In the dashboard there is temperature and fuel gauge. It can also show your speed and revs. With 1.3 engine came only the manual transmission, which I love actually. Next few features you can find in this car are air conditioning and rear window defroster. And clocks, it has clocks. Digital. Wow, future. When Mitsubishi manufactured this car 20 years ago, they were really futuristic. You can see this pocket nicely fits modern smartphone. Just perfect tight fit and this will not go anywhere, even in tight corners. Then there is ashtray. And then underneath your ashtray there is the flimsiest cup holder I have ever seen. In the middle of the dashboard you can see there is really convenient pocket with doors just below the radio. But it's not convenient at all because the doors were broken and I didn't want to keep looking at the hole in my dashboard so I glued them back in so it cannot be opened. Then it has fairly large glove box in which you can fit about two vests, set of bulbs and little snack. One of the previous owners put in this aftermarket radio which in somebody's eyes lowers the value of this car but hey this car has no value so it can only benefit from this radio and personally I enjoy a little bit of music and since I stream with Spotify I really appreciate the ability to connect my smartphone to my radio. Speaking of music, if you wanna listen to classic radio stations while driving, you need to pull out this antenna, which is almost as long as the car itself. I've always found this hilarious. And also, it's only manually operated, so when you are driving, and you decide that you want to listen to the radio, you have to roll down your window and pull the antenna out with your hand. When you are done listening to a radio, you just simply take this antenna and feed it back into the hole, which is heavier than it looks. Center console area in this car is also fairly practical. You can see there are slots for your coins, nice practical pocket for your sunglasses and another quite big storage area 
in which you can fit about three or four wallets and keys and your wife because you don't have any technically this car is five seater but realistically it can only take two persons comfortably two kids in the back and a dog maybe if it's chihuahua in order to get to the back seat you have to press this latch move the seat forwards and fold it now I can quite comfortably climb inside and move the seat back uh, yeah. I am here but I couldn't drive this car there is just too little of a space but if there was somebody else on hand I think I could get around in here but certainly not comfortable I am 6 foot 4 and headroom is a bit of a concern here basically I can't sit at all Well, if I imagine there is somebody else sitting next to me No, no way This would be too tight even for a loving young couple If you want to use your car as a moving bedroom uh, I wouldn't choose this one No, please don't Except for an ashtray There is virtually no equipment for rear seat passengers like, there is nothing, maybe light, which is shared with the whole cabin. But, you know, this should have been a cheap, reliable car for young people. What's also worth noting, if you want to move driver's side, you need to press two latches. One which folds the seat, and the other which moves the seat. On the other side, it's just one latch. You simply pull it and the seat basically shoots forward. I love this fog lamp. It looks almost like Formula 1 to me. Despite this car's compactness, it provides really generous trunk space. Lit in green. These green LED lights are one of the modifications last owner has done to this car. I personally don't mind them because it looks like a car from Need for Speed Underground 2, which I grew up on. Despite the Need for Speed and Fast and Furious look of this trunk, I like those LEDs because trunk lights are usually not strong enough as you can see in this car <laughs> it can live lit up this area f maximally to the half also under the floor there is a spare tire for this car in the back we can find this conveniently placed hazard triangle and the first aid, aid kit suspension is really firm and it doesn't uh, wobble at all in turns but uh, right can be a little bit harsh especially when I put on bigger rims just for the record 14 inch with uh, skinnier tires so I can feel every every bump only a real drawback of this car is lack of power this car is a top spec for Europe which means it has front fog lights but when I use them I do it only for style and for a feeling because the bulbs in them are so weak I can see the difference with them being on or off rear fog light is nice and bright it really works well but the fronts are crappy despite doing 
150,000 miles and being 20 years old, this car still looks, looks really stylish and in a good shape. What I like the most about the styling is definitely the rear end. It looks really sharp and aggressive. Also the huge tailpipe plays its role in there. As I said before, thanks to the low weight, this car is reasonably quick despite being quite low on power. It's quite zippy and you can rely on that in every car. Now let's test 0 to 60 tower. That's the tour of my 1998 Mitsubishi Colt. It's green, it's zippy, it's fairly practical and cheap to run. And it actually can fit four to five people if they like each other. I've been using this car for last six months and it's been really, really reliable. It has no, no problems whatsoever except of those which it had from the beginning for five hundred dollars huge value over here huge value also I checked my state database and there are only 43 of these cars left on the road so it's getting fairly rare just for your information I live in a country which has 10 million inhabited so that's it for this video guys thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye!